I have always been a huge nerd for note taking. Same! But my interest goes a bit further than note-taking and into the entire literature of educational science, which is why Amy's recent video piqued my interest, but some of the things she said I'm not too sure about. Skipping over the ad at the beginning, her first point was directed at verbatim note-taking. We need to stop trying to copy things verbatim when we are making notes. Which, caveat, verbatim notes are useful for more factual information like numbers, stats, equations, and worked examples when thinking about the worked example effect from cognitive load theory. But generally, I agree. However, she then followed it up with this. And it's even worse when we're typing notes. When you're typing notes, you're very fast. It's much more likely that you can type exactly what you heard or what you saw. Which, as I went over in a recent review, is not entirely true. Those unskilled in effective note-taking are likely to take more verbatim notes. People taking handwritten notes can't take as many, so it's less likely they will be verbatim notes because they need to keep up with the content. But if you have skilled people in note-taking, there is no significant difference. However, the technology advantage afterwards does impact what you do with the notes. An important point here, verbatim notes are the main difference, not the medium the notes are taken in, which Amy supports well by saying it should be what we interpreted from that interaction. Which is part of the process of understanding. Fairly complex topic with plenty of academic dialogue, but she then gives her rule for useful note taking, which is to take fleeting notes described by her as fleeting note is basically just anything that comes to mind or anything really, really fast, even a single word that you want to put down. Then going on to explain how it can anchor your memory and it's important to get things out of your head as soon as possible. This is where she lost me a bit. We know understanding is done in our head, creating connections between knowledge. So taking things out of our head wouldn't help understanding. It might reduce the mental load in working memory if that is the philosophy of thought that you follow, but taking the note also requires effort, potentially distracting you from the conversation or the content in turn increasing load on working memory at the time of taking the note, meaning you may not pay attention to something or forget to write something down or miss it. She then goes on to say, possible. The reason why fleeting notes matter is because the faster you get them out of your head, the sooner you'll be able to understand it and build upon it. Which is maybe a misunderstanding on my part from her saying sooner, because if it is out of your head, you can't think about it, so you can't understand it. I assume she means sooner after the conversation because the note is an anchor for memory. However, I wouldn't say it is an anchor because as the conversation goes on, we sense more information, potentially learn and understand more through thinking as the conversation or content moves forwards, creating a different meaning of the fleeting note taken. So the note acts more like a trigger of thought or memory rather than an anchor of a conditioned or predetermined idea. Unless, of course, the fleeting note is verbatim and more factual in its content, which is expressed in this next comment. Fleeting notes is going to be pretty useless to you unless you interpreted them in the moment that they inspired you. But if the fleeting note is an anchor, it wouldn't really matter when you look at it, because it is an anchor for your thinking in the note. Go meet X person at Y time. If it is a trigger, then you can view it over time, adding to your thoughts, creating connections, therefore deeper understanding. Meet X person before Y event after Z time they are available to talk. More information can change the memory, which is an example she goes over in the video following up with. And I'll refer back to what I wrote down and do a little bit more of a deep dive of what just happened. I'll probably add some things I never wrote down because I knew I'd remember them. So the taking fleeting notes rule is for things you might forget or things you want to explore afterwards. But during the review, you can make fleeting notes on the past. In my mind, they are triggers for thought, but I'm not going to argue about the semantics of words used, but it does make me think of unknown unknowns in those fleeting notes. How can you review these things you don't know about yet? She then says, said fleeting notes need to be discarded. How can we challenge, review, critique, or synthesize those triggers or notes? We are taking triggers for thought, that we review afterwards to gain deeper understanding. But if we are discarding them, how can we keep learning from them? The conversation moves towards permanent notes and where to keep them. But the example used 
don't discard the fleeting notes. She merges, combines, or stores them for reference later on. So what makes the note fleeting if it's stored? Get into the habit of making fleeting notes in the moment. And as soon as you can afterward, interpret them into something more permanent and then discard your fleeting notes. When considering natural learning, we sense information, use the information, then refer back to it in the future if it is necessary, which is what I hear here, but with constraints. Make the fleeting note in the moment, but she also does it afterwards. Interpret them into something permanent, which is reviewed and changed later, and discard fleeting notes by storing them somewhere. To me, this sounds like a linear description of a non-linear process. The book How to Take Smart Notes is the main reference for the video and is referenced a lot in the note-taking world, but I would argue it adds unnecessary complexity into the learning process, jargon, and I think adds unintentional constraints. If something seems interesting or important, write it down. If you need or want to use it, make sure you can find it, then use it to help your understanding of whatever it is. Why do you need to add so many labels or types of notes? And why are we trying to describe a non-linear dynamic process learning in a linear step-by-step -step format? What are your thoughts?